Hi, and welcome to Queers and Soaps. I'm Eric. Hey, I'm Devin. And, <laughs> and we are following up with the number 96. Well, it's just number 96, right? Not the number 96. Well, I guess like the characters kind of say the number 96 a few times, like just referring okay. to kind of like the building, but yeah, number 96. I always call it the number 96. I don't know why I can't stop, but <laughs> um, <laughs> tell me over all the credits and we'll get right into it. All right. So, um, before we start, I looked. Uh, I like to give a little character actor information that I, you know, easily Googled. Um, I looked up Pat McDonald, who plays Dory Evans, which um, didn't know that she was on that Sons and Daughters that you told me about. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, if you've ever heard me talking about Fiona on that show, that's her. Mm-hmm. I was like really psyched when um, Via Vision, love you guys, um, started. <laughs> releasing full seasons of that or full collections of it i mean they go seasons they collection seasons it's each year so yeah right so yeah it um she was on there from 82 to 87 i didn't get her name what was her name on there uh fiona fiona um i also found out that she was married to a man and then she had a partner a woman that she was on 96 with um, yeah, she named, comes into it a little bit later. Bunny Brook was her Bunny name. Brooke. Yes, um, I love Bunny Brook. She even had a, on a side note, she even had like a quick stint there. I think it was about a year or two on E Street in the late 80s, early 90s. And like, I like, she, she's sort of a bit like an auntie character in that, I think. But like, I love her. I love her and everything. <laughs> nice. So Pat McDonald, I did find out she died in 1990 at 67 years old due to pancreatic cancer, sadly. Yeah. Um, her partner, Bunny Brook, died 10 years later. But I didn't look up Bunny Brook, so she's not on, yeah. officially on the show yet. But when she's no. on, I'll look her up and, um, you know, we'll learn some more information about her. Unless you people out there just want to Google yourselves, that's fine, too. <laughs> uh, All right, so... I, I... It's pretty it's pretty interesting just the way all the shows crisscross and like all the yeah, yeah. And so, I'll never meet Pat McDonald. I was like that's one of my <laughs> things is that I was born I was like I had a, what like two or three years old when she passed away and then grow up yeah, yeah. loving the shows and then I'm like, I can't even go to like a convention somewhere down south and meet her, you know, or something like that. Right. So episode six picks up. Um Lucy gets a call. Mark comes in, says the baby died. Vera comes in. Um, he's blaming himself about it. He wants to move and such. Um, Lucy and Alf talk. He's got 250 bucks. He does not trust Australian banks. He wants to keep everything, all his cash himself. Doesn't like anything Already about Australia. Insidious. It's an insidious lot we are. No, I actually chuckle because, like, that's... Um, I was it's something I'll make mention of as we go through the episodes, but like um, Alf's fuzzy, like the constant bitching and stuff, and I'm I chuckled myself where he doesn't actually trust the concept of interest rates, and I'm just like, ah, <laughs> like <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> yeah, it really is. And we are in 1972. I don't know how good that you know stuff was back then. You know, well, Alf also like Alf and Lucy also look like they're a bit older as well. Yeah. Lucy um, says she might buy herself an evening gown with that money. <laughs> Why not? You what? <laughs> <laughs> Mark blows off Rosie. Um, Bev and Janie and Don. Oh, no, wait. They we're in Bev and Janie's apartment. They're just chatting. Don comes by for bread and they talk <laughs> about her job. <laughs> yeah, so it's the mo- yeah, it's it's the morning, and he comes down and is basically whinging about how Bruce didn't go shopping, and so he doesn't yeah. have toast. And so that's just like that <laughs> opening. That's just that scene where Bev is just like, so she she sort of mentioned Don, I think, in the earlier episode, saying he was nice looking, and now we actually start seeing her like outright like it starts there. It gets like outrageous flirting <laughs> to heavy advances as it goes on. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Um, Vera goes to Aldo's store. She wants wine for the dinner with Lucy. Lucy invited her to dinner. Mark comes in. Um, he's depressed about losing the baby, pretty much. 
Helen yeah. wants to come home and he doesn't want her to be there. He wants to go somewhere else because he feels like, you know, he's, I, you would think it would be like the opposite. Like you would think she'd want to move, but she wants to be back home um, after losing the baby and all. Yeah. Um, Bev and Don talk on the steps. She invites him in. Alf wonders why Lucy invited Vera to dinner. Um, that would be an extra mouth to feed. He's, 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 a... he's just having his typical characteristic whinge. And him and, because him and Lucy, um, they get a little bit more tame with each other, like balanced out. But like they mm. constant, this is just their vibe. They they bicker at each other. Alf's a whinge and old bastard. Like he really Oh, yeah, is. I can see. Yeah. Yeah. It's a character trait. Um, and Lucy is just that balance to it. So when he, hit, he, you know, he contradicts himself, she calls him on it. She straight out just calls him on it. She's like, oh, really? <laughs> really? Wow. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, Don, I guess Don ends up going to Bev's apartment and he like helps her zip up or zip down her dress, like unzip after, I guess, work or whatever. She cozies up next to him. Yeah. Uh, she goes into Janie's room and then Don leaves. So I guess not much. Okay, so, like, she got home from, it's just more Don stuff. So, like, she gets home um, and sort of, like, you know, oh, hey, Don, you know, like, blah, blah, blah. And she does the flirty thing, like, help him zip me. And then, but she doesn't check to see if Janie's home. So she goes in there, talks to Janie, like, oh, hey, girl, how you going, sort of thing. How's the day? Janie's just studying, doing her thing. And it's just all these, like, little basic character interactions. But all the while, like, you know, Bev's making those, like, jokes about, this man she has in the in the lounge, you know, like yeah. um, Janie thinks that it's Alex. Uh, no, not Alex. No, I think it is Alex at first because like she's expecting him to show. She's yeah, like, oh she's no, and friend. then yeah, and then Don comes in, blah blah blah. I actually love some of these scenes and the way Don is so befuddlingly sort of like he's charmed, but he just doesn't know how to handle it. And yeah, yeah he really I, doesn't. I, I, he like runs from her pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually um, it's pretty. Cute pretty cute lucy turns off the tv um alf gets mad because he's just watching it they have like like you said they're just going like character interaction nothing major yeah um, well vera's showing up for dinner you know stuff like vera, that. vera gets there they're excited or else lucy's excited that she brought wine with her it's like some kind of 1972 vintage something chateau something well um aldo at that party mentioned that um he brews his own wine basically makes his own wine. So she goes down there and like hits him up to see if he's got anything that she, she can grab off of him. So that was like in that earlier scene you mentioned. Right. Um, Alex, the producer gets there. Um, He seems to be very into Bev. um, And he ends up calling her a cold little bitch, rubs (laughs) her leg, goes to kiss her. Janie comes in and ruins that mood. Thank goodness. Well, like, even there, though, Bev Bev sort of is flirting with him, but she's kind of letting him know that she's not really interested. So she's just like, right. you know, he goes, oh, what would I do if I did this? And she was like, well, you're sitting there. You've got to put your, your – I imagine your arm will have to rest somewhere. But I would turn and sip my drink, you know? Yeah. Like, she's just trying to sort of – like, po- it's like a weird, polite way of saying, yeah. I'm not interested. Right. She needs to be a little bit more forward with him. <laughs> oh no, I uh, yeah, yeah. Um Alex and Janie bump into Mark. Well at that That's point it's still have... the game. Yeah. Aldo so Alex and, Mark... and Janie okay. Sorry, sorry. Um Alex and Janie yeah. bump into Mark and we just sort of hear more about um Helen's condition. So Helen, apparently yeah. A, yeah, like a catatonic dis uh, what was it? Catatonic um withdrawal or something like that. Yeah. Um, what? Aldo and Mark hang out. I have with wine. <laughs> Were they drinking wine too? Um, yeah. Mark's depressed. Um, Rose is going to be gone for the night. So Aldo is just like, look, you know, you, you've had some really terrible things happen. Um, why don't you just come down for dinner? Right. Doesn't go well. Um, <laughs> Rose comes in. Uh, he Aldo says, just like a woman, they changed their mind. There we go with the sexism. 
um, <laughs> Rose and Mark talk, um, and she she loves him, basically, still crushing on him, whatever. He says, you're crazy, you have nothing to offer, no experience. He drives her off. Um, also it's found out awful. that she's a virgin. And Aldo yeah. overhears everything, and the end of episode six. Yeah. <laughs> Mark's pretty anything awful. On, so. Anything else on that episode you want to add? Uh, it's just a lot of context episode driving home that stories mm-hmm. are carrying through. Like, um, just in, like, before dinner, like, you have um, uh, Alf talking to Lucy, and they talk about Vera, and it's all that bickering. But then, like, yeah. they just are reiterating that. He goes, oh, has the call stopped? Has she called the police? He doesn't sort of understand why. And they just, it's just that thing of, like, reiterating the little plot lines that are weaving through the building. Yeah. So episode seven opens. I, I like this, this, these episodes kind of, like, go into the next one. Like, it ends, and then it yeah. flat, it goes back a little each one. Um, yep. Typical soap style stuff. Um, Aldo wants him out. You spoke to yep. her like she was a prostitute, like she's dirt. Get out of my house before I kill you, basically. Yep. basically so he's pissed. Yeah. And Mark's oh, upset yeah. about it because he actually likes Aldo and he respects Aldo. So he's upset. But I mean, if you did respect Aldo, you really should have been a little bit nicer to Rosie. I mean, you totally told her off <laughs> in like the worst yeah. way. Well, the I thing mean, is, like, this weird separation where he somehow thinks that Rose is sort of scheming to hold on to him while she's just a lovesick girl. You know what right, I mean? Like, right. It's like he's supposed to be older. And I think that's the part that here where Aldo drives that home is that a lot of the onus up until this point has kind of been placed on Rose being the pursuer. And he's just like this, oh, oh my, I'm this poor, horny husband. You know, yeah, like, yeah. And stuff like, and like, I, so it's really overt, but it's also, they have these little balancing moments where Aldo's just like, no, my daughter is, is an experience. She's the virgin. You're a grown man who's married. You know better, essentially. Yeah. You know, and um, Mark can't really handle it, you know, in a lot of ways. That's why he ends up like shutting the app up as, you know, like. Yeah. Yeah. So we get um, into. Yeah. We get into Herb and Dory's apartment. Um, she's hearing something. As phone she does. Rings. The, she, the phone rings. She wants him to go look and see what's going on. He doesn't want to go. He's like, no, you know, it's that's their business. He's he's more like the sane one, <laughs> it seems like. And also the one that, like, I think somebody says eventually, like, he's always trying to make Dory happy. Um, yeah. And he goes along with all her little bullshit schemes and whatever she's pulling out, you know, in her ass <laughs> at the time. Um, so it, so this, this part was funny. So, like, Dory ends up scaring Herb. Vera scares Dory. <laughs> like, in this weird step moment. They're, like, around the steps or whatever. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Vera has, like, a tray of tea or something for Mark because, she, you know, he's yeah. depressed and she just wants to help him out. Yeah. Um. Just and then it was just like workmen making noise. Is the place? Um. It's a massage parlor that they're it's working not, on. It, 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 it's not a massage parlor. It's what Dory thinks is going down there, and to her, a massage parlor means happy massage parlor. <laughs> like. <laughs> right, but it's not a massage parlor that they're making. No. So um. In a, I think in like episode 10, <clears throat> excuse me, I think in like episode 10, you have Don and Bruce make a remark about how it's actually going to be a chemist. Like, and Dory's oh. been running around and getting people, get like, you know, losing her hair over it and stuff, and they laugh yes. about it. Yeah, back then, like, massage parlors were undercover for prostitute rings and all of that. It's been in like every oh, yeah. cop show on, in, on air back in the 70s. And uh, Matt um, Police was very big back then, too. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Um, so Vera and Mark, they have tea together, or whatever she made. I, I'm assuming it's tea. And they talk like about tea. Aldo. He worries about him and Helen coming home. Um, basically, you know, we're learning there is a little bit more depth to Mark than just being a complete douchebag. Yeah. Um, and he wants and he wants to go back to teaching. I guess he stopped teaching, I guess, you know, whatever. Um, while he's in mourning his baby and stuff. Um, Bruce and Don have breakfast. They talk about Bev, like, hey, why don't you take Bev to the movies or something, or to the pictures, oh, they called it. That's right, because they're alluding to Bruce's boss coming over for a little fun night. I, yeah, I, yeah, keep going, keep going. I'm excited <laughs> about this. Though. 
Um, Aldo and Rose talk. Um, he's upset that she stayed out and that she isn't a virgin anymore. Um, yeah. And she, he just wants her to settle down and marry a nice Jewish boy. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, Dory goes and talks to the workmen. Um, I thought I thought they mentioned like massage parlors in there. Um, she goes to Herb all upset, and he doesn't seem to care. <laughs> well, this he time. doesn't really. He doesn't really like. Yeah, I guess when she keeps going on about the same thing, he's kind of get he gets over it. He cares for a minute, and then he's over it. He like, tries to calm her down a lot of the time because she works herself up. Right. Um, Don left Bruce a recipe to make his married girlfriend Maggie. Dinner. Yeah, so um, she wanted like a she wanted like a meal or something. They mentioned that she's like really high maintenance and like all that. They con then it's like a persistent joke that we see um leading up to this character's appearance. She's a douche. Um she gets there, they kiss, um, she strips down. And dinner is ready. He see it, so it seems like Bruce is the one in this situation where he wants the relationship to be further, and she's like, "I'm married, you know this." No, but he also like asks her for money. Like you're my side piece. So yeah. So and then, well, but he, he also did, but, for money. For but then he, but he said that also. He's like, "You're making me feel like a gigolo." So I'm like, "Well, isn't that what a gigolo is? Like when you're doing it for money." Exactly. He's trying to like, <laughs> it's like when she hits him with the truth, he's like guilting her because later on we find that Bruce is like checking his time and he's watching everything. Like, I feel this thing of like, he's, it's weird. I find Bruce to be very to and fro with her, you know, right. like play, he plays the game because this is, um, this character as we are introduced and like, um, is Maggie Cameron, Maggie Cameron. Um, I'm just making sure I get uh, the full name. Correct. Is, portrayed mm -hmm. by Bettina Catherine Welch, who passed away in 93. And I just wanted to double mm. check all that before I said it, because this lady is phenomenal. I Maggie Bloody Cameron, as um, the show quote, like it's a thing quote for the show. She's the high powered villainess of the show. Ah, uh, okay. So I can um, see it. I see bitch all, already out of her. Oh yeah, oh yeah. She does, and even in the episodes that we will be watching. So obviously, like, um, we don't have every every episode or anything like that. Um, Umbrella Entertainment only released these th uh, three collections in their um arcs, like the beginning, uh, the Pony Host Strangler, blah blah blah, and the film. Um, so there's only sort of that's what's available, but enough of it is there that you do get a good vibe on Maggie's uh, character. Also, Umbrella, if you happened to be coming across this, it would be really awesome <laughs> if you release the rest of the episodes. Or, hey, just give us the last 30 or 50 in like a four-disc collection, just like these ones. Like, it would be <laughs> great, guys. Just saying. Um. So where were we? So I know I completely derailed that. Then. <laughs> totally. No, <I'm> Sorry. <laughs> so so um, yeah, no, we were talking about Bruce and Maggie and their dynamic. They're making out. He asks her for money. He's like, "Oh, you, you two treat me like a gigolo," sort of thing. Right. And, so yeah. Bev, Bev and Don uh, talk about a movie. I don't know if they ever went to the movies. I don't know. So there's a little tiny scene there where you do see Don and Bev like head off. And they're just doing their banter. They come back. And I think she's sort of talking about the movie. She didn't really like the movie. They're just small chat, small talk. And then right. she, yeah. And um, what was it? Bruce is still in there with Maggie. Don's like, I can't go home. And she's like, well, come in for a beer. Zip. You know? Right. Like... Um, Rose and Vera talk about Aldo going on about marriage. Um, and Mark, men are bastards. Vera says... Oh, she's only she's only hurting herself. Um, yeah. Rose is very angry, very young, and very just yeah. angry. And in all honesty, I'm not gonna lie, she probably had one of the worst first times. Like it's not so much the moment, but the aftermath. He's horrible to her. Like Mark is horrible yeah. to her. Like it's so out of line. If anyone, uh, yeah. he just cuts so deep immediately. Just. Well, he screwed the wrong pooch. <laughs> yes. Um, and then, so Mark worries about Helen coming home still. That's continuing. 
Um, yeah. The doctor says she's ready. Um, that they can have more kids, right? Um, so the doctor, and, the doctor's all very matter of fact about it. He's just, just like she's recovered, she's physically fine, um, and she's saying she wants to go home. And you're saying you don't want her there. And like, if it's if you're worried about like things like the kids, she can just have more kids. He's just being very practical, and he's there's no bedside manner with this dude. Well, it's well, they can't keep her is basically what he's saying. And this guy, I mean, Mark's kind of stupid. Like, you, you, they can't well, just keep you if you're fine to go. Like, if you're coherent enough to go home, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Oh, no, I do understand all that. It's just more of like his just his, his general demeanor in the whole situation. He's just like, like, he didn't even ask, like, what are you actually concerned about? He's more like, it's more like a sinister accusation where he's like, why don't you want a home? Right. You know, like, <laughs> so, I just think it's funny the way he puts it across, that's all. But you're right, you're yeah. right. Yeah, and that's where it ends. And then episode eight starts with them again. And then he's like, <laughs> yeah. you can col- you can collect your wife, Mark. <laughs> yeah. Um, Bruce and Maggie have a romantic dinner. They kiss. So I guess they're still seeing each other. And he always yeah. locks Dawn out, I guess, when this happens, when she comes over for her flings. I think it's and like is- the room. I think it's just that roommate thing of like, oh, I've got someone over, you know, like leave us alone sort of thing. And this is where he says he feels like a gigolo, which I guess yeah. he is. Bruce um, is, man. He really is. <laughs> Bev and Don get to her place. This is where they kind of are, while well, she's coming on to him strong and all that. Janie's not home yet. Bev asks, um, why doesn't he make Bruce stay in the hall sometimes? Um, Bev said she would go for him, basically. I mean, she said, do you know who I would go for? And then he, like, runs away. He laughs. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, He does. He Uh, does. It's so good. (laughs) I love Don, by the way. He's a staple character. He does stay with the show the whole way through. Well, don't tell me. You're going to spoil it. No, I just meant, like... And people might... You can't say that, uh, though, because there's killers coming, and I'm not not sure he's going to die, and now I know he's not going to die. Thanks. (laughs) Thanks. <laughs> Gotta watch it. There is the so, end show. <laughs> Herb and Dory talk about campaigning for getting noise out. That's where she goes around with everybody signing a petition type situation. Um, Bruce and Maggie. Yeah. Bruce and Ma- oh, Bruce and Maggie continue to make out. She says she's got to go home. Um, he says he needs her something about lousy timing. I guess so. Yeah, like uh, um, it gets like ten to eleven or something, and she has to rush home because that's when Hubby's going to be home, and he's just like, "Oh, <laughs> that." It's funny. I like seeing this situation for a man though, because like it's usually the opposite, like yeah. Jr. You know? Yeah. Um, oh, Maggie very much treats the boys a bit like that. Bev and Don talk about her picks. Because, like, the, the pics came out, you know, her semi-nude, nude, fully blown nude, whatever is happening there. Janie yeah, comes in. <laughs> Janie comes in and says her rehearsal was inspired. Um, I put make face at T. What? Big it <laughs> I put make face at T. I don't know. Oh, why. yeah, yeah. Yeah, Janie's coming in feeling like all happy with like how things are going with like her to drama, like her her study and like her auditions and stuff like that. And right. um, I think that's the I think that's the scene where Bev is also sort of like just quizzing her on like what she thinks is going down with Alex. Like she's like, you know, like, are you sure he's like up and on the up and up? You know. Yeah, this is, like, one of those things where never, like, it's a communication thing. Like, she should really be up front with what's going on. Like, yeah, but they're not. They don't talk about things. It's weird. They talk about, like, well, nonsense. Like, well, like, Janie even shuts down. Like, she's just sort of like, yes, he's fine. Like, she stutters for a moment, but she's like, no, 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 he's fine. When, like, every indication at the start gave her the impression that he wasn't. Like, Janie is incredibly naive. Right. Yeah, I like, can tell. Like, incredibly, unbelievably, you might say, naive. <laughs> like, right. I know it's a part of how they're writing the character, and, like, you know, TV's done differently and everything, but she does come off, like, a little extra naive. Like, Bev is actually sort of more naive, like, is also carrying those sort of uh, 
that sort of approach to the situation as well. It's just a little bit more grown up than Janie's, you know? Yeah. Because, yeah, yeah. So Maggie leaves. Um, Bruce ends up popping into Bev's because I guess he knows that Don's there. Um, yeah. They just bullshit a little bit. They leave. Bev we'll wants make fun to know. Maggie. Bev wants to know what Alex is at after. Um, mm. And she also says you've been warned. Like so, she warns yeah. Jane about him. But like, like again, why don't you just tell him the situation? Like this is what he said to me. Like, you know what I mean? But maybe she needs, maybe it's one of those things you need to find out for yourself. Cause like you said, she's naive. And if Bev tells her, maybe she'll think like, oh, Bev's just jealous or Bev wants, you know what I mean? Like, so, I don't know what well, she's thinking. As the episodes play out, like even though the situations are a bit odd, like in the way they're delivered, as this sort of situation does play out, I find that like, if you sort of extrapolate Janie's situation further, you see Bev in a similar one, like later yeah. on, you know, like, um, it's varying degrees it's that's what i mean like this this shows very sort of um open and blunt with its delivery on a lot of things like um and like with sexism and how sex is even uh perceived by the two genders you know like you have mark's reaction blaming rose then you have aldo who's like no no no, you're responsible for yourself like you've always got these weird but very like loud both sides type thing and um it this kinda, plays it, it kind of cracked me up that they were like showing nudity, but at the same time, the curses were bleeped out. I'm like, yeah, so <laughs> that, you feel like it would yeah. be the opposite. So um, I know that like, I know that like across Australia, at least there's different, different states, I think, um, censored it in different ways. So like the episodes are cropped. Um, it's what these, uh, I think it's pretty much what they've been able to get a hold of. Cause I think that there's, um, uh, there's there's an episode up uh, with an attack up um, coming up. I'm not saying anything more, but there's <laughs> no footage. Um, so there were parts of the place that it was all it, basically it was censored in different play, uh, different ways in different states. And right. a surviving cut of the raw footage or like the actual scene doesn't actually exist, or they haven't found it. Right, right. Yeah. So it's things like that. So Dory makes a call about the massage parlor or what she thinks is a massage parlor. Um, she says she'll take care of it herself. Yeah. Um, that's where she starts the petition, I believe. <laughs> Aldo, Aldo asks Don about the restaurant. He still wants to, you know, get this going. Um, and Don's a lawyer, so he could help him with that. Dory goes to Vera's about the parlor. She's trying to get everybody involved. <laughs> um yeah, the way vera just plays with her and just makes fun of her it's so funny and just the but well, she just gets so haughty about it all about it all when she like picks up that Vera's just like pulling her leg it's so funny like right um uh she says you know what they are sends her off vera's phone rings crank call her again yes why um, did you say anything bruce bruce and Ta uh, Bruce is in Aldo's, um, and the petition. Uh, Her Herb is there with the petition and all that stuff. Dory comes in. Bruce says he is the first customer with the massage parlor, just to like piss her off. Yeah. <laughs> Alex comes into Bev's. Uh, he locks the door behind him. Dory, Aldo, and Herb check out the massage parlor. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and then Alex and Bev are talking. He basically forces himself on her. He like kind of holds her mouth shut or her throat or something. And he like pulls her arms behind episode. her back. He like pulls her arms behind her back and grabs her by the throat. And she's like, "I'll scream." And he's like, "You wouldn't dare." And I was just like, "Oh my god, this fucking guy." <laughs> yeah. Well, I I don't blame him a hundred percent because coming up in the next episode here. So episode nine. Um, Janie comes home basically just in time, and why didn't she say anything? I would have that would have been the first thing out of my mouth. See, he had me held up. Like, what? what why wouldn't she say anything? She doesn't say a peep. Yeah, she just sort of <laughs> doesn't say it. She's just like doesn't um, say a peep. And then, yeah, and then she uh, he runs off to the bathroom. She's like, oh yeah, Alex is here. He's in the bathroom. Um, and whatever. Then we go to I'm the next scene. 
So, like, it must be something, um, like, I'm sure that it's, it, it is the show being over the top because it is a very over the top show. Um, <laughs> but there must be something there as far as that type of culture back then that is sort of just inherently not present in things now. You know, like, right. there's no, you know, there's, there's a lot of ambiguity here in terms of, like, Bev's flirting and that, like, really sort of plays into a lot of... Um, vociferous voices out there in those types of debates um and it's just really interesting how like it it doesn't really sort of i don't really feel like it endorses anything it's just showing something but it's just interesting how it's um a lot blunter than it is now when you can argue that you're allowed to arguably get away with more as far as uh, censorship goes and stuff like that right. i don't know it's not it's not like this is a bad or a good thing i just think it's like a really interesting dynamic because like yeah. even just with australian tv shows i don't find that any shows outside of primetime ones that were kind of or like streaming shows that are geared towards that sort of like, you know, oh, the gritty sort of drug sex environments outside of those actual shows. I don't really think that there's a, a drama or a soapy that's kind of like in this vein that's kind of like just been straightforward with it. Yeah. It's just, so, just interesting when I reflect. That's all. I could be wrong. Let me know if anybody knows. So Lucy is now. Lucy and Alf talk about money and how he hates Australia. Again. <laughs> um, Bev looks at her picks at Bruce's and she loves them. And then there's one like really dirty one. I'm guessing it's her cooter. Not really yeah, sure. So yeah. <laughs> um, and then she finds she out her pick. Them. She finds out her pick made the cover of a magazine. I didn't catch yeah. the name of the magazine. Did you know which one it was? Is it a real uh, magazine? No, I wasn't. I'm not sure. I think it's actually one that Maggie owns because Bruce is one mm. of her photographers. But I just, oh. I can't remember. And they do mention it, though. I, I didn't catch it. Um, so I didn't know this girl at first. But Don helps some girl upstairs. She seems very upset and distraught. Um, yeah. Bev, Bev sees a dirty picture of her. That's when, and she says, you filthy man. Yeah. Um, we find out the lady is Ethel, who is Lucy and Alf's daughter. Um, yes, she's at yeah. the number eight apartment that's theirs, and she's crying, knocking on the door. Um, she's about she's upset about her man Kevin. Um, apparently he's been fired from his job, and she's basically there for money. Um, yeah. Alf says he's a pain in the ass, um, and they can't afford to pay the rent, so basically she wants rent money. Um, Bruce and Bev bust on Don because <laughs> they're messing Thank with you, them. Um, Bruce and Bev they bust on Don. They're like messing. Oh with yeah, them. yeah, yeah, yeah. But nothing major happened. Um, yeah. Ethel tries to make Alf think that Kevin was going to get another job soon. It's always like one of those. I guess it's like um, what is that really like um? I can't explain it. Like an abusive relationship, almost kind of. Like she's making excuses for this guy and whatever. They're just they're just kind of like the way Alf talks is just like her boyfriend's just kind of a no hoper. He'd rather party up and drink with his mates than go out and actually provide for his family. And then obviously Alf goes into a tirade about how it was all of Australian men are like that. Um, <laughs> and yeah. stuff like that. Um but yeah, yeah, it's just all that stuff. Your boyfriend's a shitbag, basically. Get a better man. Like yeah. <laughs> Well, it's not her boyfriend, um, Peggy it's her husband. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, her husband. No, no, I was saying the boyfriend, too, but I was like, no, 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 it's actually Ethel's husband. Uh, I actually just said her man. I didn't even say what it was. Because <laughs> I guess I didn't. I wasn't positive at the time. Oh, it was just all me. <laughs> um, Janie and Alex are out to eat, um, and he says that he saw Bev the, the other night and finds out that she never said anything about what He's happened. He's probing. He's probing. Oh, for sure. Because now he knows he could probably get away with a nice rate. Um, yeah. He also, they have a weird conversation about sex and nudity. And he's like, oh, you should show show your tits because it's funny. Like, what? Yeah, he, <laughs> he tries to explain, like, the tone of this scene, despite the fact that she's uncomfortable. And then tells her that he's growing weary of her. And she's like, well, what do you mean? And he's like, basically, like, you you're acting like you don't have any experience with this sort of stuff and that you have never, you know, you're not a sexual person, essentially. Um, yeah. You know, you could be a virgin. And he just, it's just this awful thing where he's just basically trying to make her feel bad for not wanting to show him her tits. 
Yeah, and it's working because you could tell. Yeah, it is. Piece. Yeah, it is. She sells that look really. It's you know what it is, man. It's that downward look when someone is just hit with like this uh, again type thing. You know what I yeah. mean? Like and the actress, uh, sorry, the actor portrays it really well. Yeah. Um. Ooh, what was that? Rose comes into Bev's for advice about leaving. She wants still wants to leave home. Yeah. Um, Bev Bev mentions her mom. Um, her mom ends up calling as they're talking. And she's like, oh, the bitch wants me home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She yeah. basically tells her mom that she'll go home for the night. Do we yeah. get to meet her mom? I'm guessing we, we do. do. We do. Um, so episode 450 is, and her mother also makes an appearance in the movie. Okay. Those are the ones I can um, remember. Alf wants, wait, Alf wants Ethel to stay with them. But basically says that he'll pay their rent or whatever. So he's going to do whatever it takes. Basically pay them to break up. Lucy's yeah, so like, he, can, uh, he says that Ethel can move in with them. They can get rid of the yeah. flat. And Evan can just go stay with one of his mates until he gets a job. Yeah. Can live up the doll. And Lucy's like, what are you up to? Um, Maggie comes to Bruce. Uh, says about playing. She has to play wife tonight. <laughs> I guess she can't stay with them long. So she comes and actually has that painting that he wanted the 500 bucks for. And he's like super happy about it um, and all that jazz. And she, he's just like, you know, oh, come and sit. And she's like, no, 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 I don't have the time. I've got to go play the dutiful wife tonight. Hubby's having a mm -hmm. few mates over for sort of like a deal or something like that or a meeting or something. And I've got to go talk to these boring blokes sort of thing. And yeah. Yeah. Um, Lucy answers I Vera's. I just love every scene she's in, honestly. She just is so... And there's not a whole lot of swearing and everything like that, but she, there's a couple of lines throughout the show that she, even in these episodes, she just cuts. And you can, just the delivery, it's like acid right. tongue. I love Maggie Cameron. Lucy answers Vera's phone. It's a lady, Kathy or whatever, and she wants a reading. Um, and then mm -hmm. she finds out that Vera is still getting the calls. So she says, like, go to the police. Like, what are you doing? Um, uh, this is that scene where she's like, oh, it could be like, Lu um, Lucy's big doom and gloom thing like she did earlier. Where she's like, it could be like a stalker, a rapist, a yeah. homicidal murderer. And it just keeps getting worse. And Vera's just looking at her. I was laughing. And I was she's like, pretty yeah, much right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, she hasn't called the police. Vera's uh, about to go to bed. She hears like some noise or whatever. She unplugged her phone, so I guess because so that she wouldn't be awakened from the caller. There's like thumps around. This man comes in and like stands at the door. And end of episode nine. Yeah, I do love Lucy when she does that. And then you're not wrong. Like it did play out that way. Like it creeps in a like a apartment. But just the way it escalates, she's like, oh, it could be just a stalker. I'm like, oh, what if it's this? Oh my god, what if it's this? Right, right. And I just like. <laughs> So uh, anyway. epi episode 10 starts. Um, Vera hangs up with Lucy again, unplugs the phone. Um, this man is at the door. His name's Harry, apparently, or wherever he's at. Is it the doorway? It looked like he was at the way. It looks so like he's at her bedroom door. So like she's heard something door. creeping through the apartment. And yeah, she turns, does the big dramatic scream because he's at the bedroom door. I don't know how big these apartments are. They don't look very big, but they seem bigger inside than it <laughs> appears to be. <laughs> But yeah, I basically put, she knows him. I didn't know who it was, so. Um, and he it, um, basically rips her clothes off and throws her on the bed. <laughs> so it's her husband, the one that she talked about that just took off. Right. Which and we he comes find, up. We don't, find, we don't find out right away, though. We don't find out that. Oh, uh, wasn't later. it in that scene? No, that was that scene. He walks in and he's like, oh, is it my, the color of my, m oh, yeah, no, like, she knows him. We show that he knows, she knows yeah, him. Yeah, but, but we don't like, know oh, it's her husband. Color? He um, hits her with the money lines and all that before he tears her clothes off. Because afterwards, she's right. angry at it. So, like, um, right. he's like, oh, the color is my color of my money you want to see and all that. Which is funny because Australia, we have very colorful money. But, like, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think I have an like, Australian bill somewhere. And he basically calls her a slut a bunch of times. And she's like, get out. I've had enough of this sort of thing. And then it's the big, and he throws yeah. her on the bed. So... Aldo's talk talks to Rose. He says um, he wants to take or he wants her to basically like get rid of Mark somehow. It looks like 
She's like, take a knife to him. That's what we did in the old country. Um, he talks her into helping with the restaurant. That's going to happen eventually. She She's still kind of like not wanting to be there. Um, Aldo strikes me as a man who chose peace at some point in his life. Yeah. And he, <laughs> he says, we can make the place for young people. You can meet a bunch of people, blah, blah, blah. Tries to make it look good. So she'll yeah, want to stay she, around. She, she's depressed and she wants to like, spread her wings and get out and all that you know she's like she's had sex for the first time her dad is overbearing hovers constantly and he's like no look well when we get the restaurant you know you'll it'll be better because we'll be around a more variety of people like you know and she's just like when papa when like right. you know, it, she's just getting driven nuts right. and yeah yeah the next scene we see harry raped vera um he like just gets up whatever um he says he still loves her a lot and he seems almost just obsessive about her um and she said she wants to hate if that was considered love yeah because he goes i love you choose hate yeah every day um we find out that he was gone for a year yeah um and she was never unfaithful to him and i just put he crazy (laughs) <laughs> he isn't great he is actually insane but um yeah, through the dialogue sure. and stuff like that she talks about the past part of her past right. came up and he couldn't handle it and it's basically right, like, yeah like yeah. and all that that's why he's come in with the dollar bills that's why he's called her a slut and that's why he's basically thrown her down because those are all did he not for that shit. but did he know that about her beforehand like they were presumably, married presumably not because she goes, she says the past can come up and slap you right in the face. I don't blame you for leaving. Mm. I don't blame you for leaving. I just, mm. you know, it's because of what, because of that. But you don't come back and attack me. You don't come back and, you know, like, like give me lewd phone calls and make me fear for my safety, essentially. Right. You know, and she does hit him with all that. Vera doesn't like. It's weird. It's weirdly passive because she doesn't go off and attack him. She doesn't. It's so like. It has that vibe of the times when husbands were entitled to their wives' bodies. Yet right. she's so angry about him. It looks it's almost like something that they would fight over, not leave and press charges over. That's what's wild. Like right. and the dynamic just creates so many more colours in the scene. Like Vera doesn't really pull punches with what he did. And he's sitting there guilting, he's sitting there being like, Oh, forgive me. And she's like, Oh my god. Yeah. It's weird. It's um, so so different looking back on it, looking at it like in now time, you know? Now. So Rose talks about going to the beach. Aldo says go. Mark comes in. Aldo says you're a disgrace. Like he wants to get out, whatever. Mark's basically yeah. there because he wants them to keep quiet when Helen comes home. He doesn't want Helen to find out about or talk about her and Rose because she already knows. But it almost seems like she might forget. I'm I'm not sure about that situation. But we'll find that out in a little bit. So um, she's yeah yeah. He says, uh, "Mark is the only one that can hurt her." Basically. Yeah, he's not going to go out of his way to cause trouble. He's not going to sit there and like make sure that Rose is around while Helen's around. It's like it's that vibe. He's like that's why he's like, "Oh, you think I'm I'm like you? You think I'm going to start trouble? You think that I'm going to use people?" He's like, "No, no, right. no, no. I I am not such a man." And then um, and he's and then he tells him to get. The next scene we have Herb listening at the door like his wife, <laughs> um, and then I think it's at, is it at the workers' place or was it the girls' place? Um, I Dang think no, 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 it's um, I think Dory was supposed to be helping Mark with the cradle from the um baby, the dead baby. Oh, okay. And then he yeah, ends up he falling. The sides of the cradle, he comes out with him. And then they show like Janie exercising. Dory comes in to tell, talk about the trash, finds Bev's nude pics. She takes a pic. I'm guessing she took the worst pic. I'm not really sure. Oh, uh, um, I love all of this. I love all of yeah, this. Yeah, it was really there. funny. She, go, <laughs> she goes to Herb, and she's like, he's like, well, show me. And he's, she's like, I don't know. It'll turn you or something. It'll corrupt you, Herb. I It'll know corrupt you too you. well. <laughs> um she's like yeah i don't trust you with it or whatever and then she like shows on real fast like <laughs> yeah he's like well i'm not gonna tell you my secret then dory and what secret Herb? like and then yeah and then he sees the picture and then he's like dreadful dreadful got any more 
<laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, and, oh my god! And he's like, where did you get it? Up there, I found it. Oh, I'm gonna get that trash. No help! Like, it's so funny and st- yeah. stupid. Like, <laughs> Lucy's Lucy's boss. Lucy's boss ends up going to the laundromat, checks on her. I guess he has to do his rounds or whatever. Yeah, I think it's just um, that like, thing. And I, she's hitting him up. I put, he, he, I put he seems like a creep. Um, she He's asks great. to borrow 100 bucks against her next two checks um, for yeah. her daughter. He basically says, no, we don't do that. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, Dory, Dory goes to Lucy about Vera. Um, he sh- she shows the pic of Bev. This is crazy. Um, Lucy asks if she is jealous. <laughs> yeah, because she has the complete opposite reaction. She's just like, oh, look. And then, she's like, beautiful. And then you, she has a beautiful yeah, body, a beautiful she body. says. Yeah. Oh, she's there was like, are you jealous? Like, yes. Like, you know, and then she just storms off, you know, like, yeah. there is something I wanted to bring up a lot um, just over these last few episodes, too, particularly, um, I think, in things like this. Um, you see a lot of the older characters um, outside of sort of the uh, presumably well-traveled ones like Vera uh, and who's, you know, had hard times type of thing. Um, you see a lot of this kind of clash of old and new. You know, you've got Aldo and Alf who keep pushing these sort of old ways, you know, Alf, the longing for his old ways, Aldo not being able to come out of his ways and they're dealing, Lucy being kind of like this voice of reason, but like, um he doesn't understand banks and stuff like that and lucy's just like you're being irrational you know the, and all that like there's this sort of element uh, uh rose she's in, you know didn't have the best experience but she's starting to become like a, a young woman and experience sexuality and those feelings and what goes with that and right. her father's freaking out over it um in this you have nudity and what's considered lewd and stuff like that you've got dory who's incredibly conservative and it's like, oh no, this is deeply pornographic. And then you have Lucy, who's just like, wow, what a beautiful body, you know? And even though they're in the same age, but you have a lot of these clashes here going on. And I actually found it really interesting because you think about it, it was 1972. I mean, like, uh, you know, that was the era for all that stuff, you know? But oddly enough, I think the show manages to display the two sort of, the sort of depression, well, even, um. Alf even mentions like the economy, the Australian economy is going to go to shit. It's, you know, it's this close to oppression, depression era. It's this close to depression money, you know, Um, and all that. And it's like these, you've got these older characters who have come out of the effects of those times. And you've got these young ones that just kind of want to break free. Yeah. I feel this is like a show ahead of its time type situation. Yeah. Because like, like, that's why I said to you before in the last one, I'm like, you know, it seems like, I guess it's in black and white, but it appears almost like it was more recent. Like the way it, yeah. the way the stories are, like it doesn't seem like too far off of today's type of stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah. So like, um, and like I said, they are very blunt, and it kind of has this like vaudevillian vibe and comedy about it, you know? Like it's definitely yeah. like over the top show. It does, you know, but um, it does well in these if everything's going to be a big so because it's got that 70s sort of exploitation vibe especially the movie you'll see what i mean um right. but in saying that though all those movies the horror movies of the time those other things and all that they were all very exploitation but they made massive statements about something here or there i feel like number right. 96 there is sort of like we're going to do both we're going to have this one yelling at this one over here about this and then we're just kind of we might have a voice of reason but we're also going to show someone coming at them from the opposite and like i said delivered very bluntly at times but it's, yeah, it's just I, honestly i have no idea what's going to happen on this show like i don't know where anything's going and i like that you know yeah um let's finish the episode and then we'll talk a little bit more about stuff um so rose tells aldo that she met someone i guess she was at the beach and met somebody um alf comes to lucy at work he says he'll give ethel the money but wants it back he wants money back and then he puts down australia again (laughs) (laughs) he basically comes down he's just come to his senses and he basically does he sort of just does what they said in the first place like what ethel right. said in the first place like it would be a loan we'd pay it back but he has to come to it on his own and then he starts whinging about um australia again and our craftsmanship 
Lucy, the voice of reason, is it's an American one. He's like, well, see, that's what I mean. The Australians copy everybody. And he's <laughs> like, they copy the English too. And he's like, that's what I'm saying, Lucy. <laughs> like, <laughs> I am I am a little upset that like with how it ended, like I won't be able to see the next episode because Helen gets home and she's mm. happy to be home and everybody's welcoming, well, welcoming her home. And um, Rose comes out of the apartment and sees Helen. And she even asked about Rose. She's like, oh, where's Rose or whatever. And then she's she like, turns around like, oh, shit, and it and it ends. So I'll never see how that works out. <laughs> so episode 13, like, not to, like, we'll save that, obviously, for, like, the next episode and stuff. But episode 13, so this is, um, it's close enough that it does kind of, the opening, it does give you a little bit of background of what's been happening with Helen because Vera okay. and Mark are chatting about it. So I just wanted to throw okay. that out there. There are things like that. Um, these episodes are partially disconnected, but they do make efforts to choose the ones. It's it, They've not just chosen the ones that where it's like, oh, this first particular type of character is introduced, whatever. It also contextualizes a lot of the stuff going on around it. So that's what I want to talk to the audience listening about. So what we're going to do, we're going to cover the next six episodes that are available um, to beginning. watch. There's only, there's only six before mm-hmm. the movie, correct? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to talk about them, and then Bevan is going to try to fill in everything that he knows leading up to the movie. And I'd then just like we're going to gonna cover the out. movie as well after that, and then, yeah. um, and so on. So that's what's going to happen with that this, because we don't have, unfortunately, we can't find these episodes anywhere, not even on YouTube. Um, if anybody else knows a secret way, let us know. <laughs> if Umbrella Entertainment or Via Vision went to the National Australian <laughs> Archive and went and made DVDs, I can just like so just on that, the the four collections, uh, sorry, the three volumes and the movie were released, I think, I in the mid two thousand oh, mid two thousands, like you know, it's millennium, like two thousand five to like <laughs> two thousand eight or something like that, you know. So like right. um. But now there's just like a whole more, a whole bigger market for that type of thing. So Via Vision's already done things like um, release the entirety of Sons and Daughters, which hadn't been completely available outside of certain of uh, Seven Plus streaming and all that sort of stuff. So um, that would be so great, you guys, because look, we're doing shows about <laughs> it. Like you know, you could plug, plug, plug your product or something. I'll ask the boys. Like, <laughs> and also, thanks for though, the comments on our last yes. um, one. I like we like seeing comments. Um, I like them, but I think Bevan replied to one or two of them or both of them. Yeah, I um, did. No, uh, yeah. So I'm glad people are actually liking this, and uh, we'll do more. You know, as much as it's it, always whatever's out there. It's always interesting to it with um, uh, extra factoids and information like that, um, just because uh, this show, uh, it's it's older, it had a very uh, controversial syndic- like syndication and distribution, like as um, uh, earlier comments said, it uh, flat out no in, um, I think it was the UK, um, because of the nudity and stuff like that. And mm. it wasn't a well-known enough show to warrant the, um, the 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 extra work to edit it and thank you for that to um the com- to the uh, commenter who gave us that info that was really interesting because it does speak to what you were saying earlier about like a big chunk of it does feel very much ahead of its time it was pushing things like nudity and um sexual issues and sexual identity issues and stuff like that in a time when people as we see other characters the more conservative ones don't talk no one talks right it's also something we see in Dallas, if anybody's been watching um, the other ones that uh, Eric and I do together. Um, nobody talks in the old days. And it's just, <laughs> and yeah. while it works as an amazing plot device, it does get frustrating <laughs> yeah. when like, you're like, guys, it just stopping talk. Oh, my God. But yes. yeah, if you just get it all out, Pam and Bobby would have been together the whole time. <laughs> yeah. So with number 96, as far as like the um character things go, I think because like it goes from I think episode 35 or something and what's available to that one in 450. 450 does give you a bit of a rundown on some of the recent things that have occurred through characters talking about it. But I think largely I'll probably just cover the characters' fates and stuff like that and what they do, leave, whatever. Um well, I'm sure like, some characters disappear. I'm sure some characters disappear after episode 450, or even between those yeah, episodes. Exactly. I would assume. 
So like 450, yeah. by the time we get to 450, a lot of these sort of staple characters, um, the ones that uh, become sort of in more endeared to the audience have arrived. Um, so I think it'd be important just to see, sort of see where like some of the old cast is kind of left off and we're introduced to these ones. So right, I guess my right. approach would be more just tying off the characters that are current, that are current, like that we're dealing with now to lead into these newer ones and the movie yeah. and stuff. All right, so we'll wrap this episode up about the number ninety six. Or see the number ninety six. Number ninety six. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us today at Queers and Soaps. Um, like, subscribe, comment, 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 because we would definitely <laughs> like help or you know whatever you want to comment about is cool. You know, let us know what you like and stuff. Who's your faves? Um, what your favorite storylines are? Because we'll be talking about them soon enough. Have a good day, everyone. Bye. <laughs>